How unbreakable can a screen get? What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. Samsung just gave a demo of their supposedly unbreakable OLED flexible displays. Now here's the thing, technically all of the recent Samsung and iPhone OLED displays are flexible. The problem is that they're trapped behind a piece of glass which makes them rigid. So Samsung is trying to work around that by attaching a transparent plastic cover to it. The reason why it is labeled as unbreakable is because it passed the UL military standards. The test is comprised of 20 26 drops from 4 feet high as well as temperature testing from 71 degrees Celsius all the way down to minus 32. It goes without saying that these tests aren't all that impressive when you know that it's a piece of plastic and not a piece of glass. Although the fact that it continued to work normally at temperatures way below freezing is kind of interesting. Now that plastic cover we talked about earlier is a special panel that is supposed to emulate the clarity of glass while keeping the shock resistance of plastic, which means that this tech would be perfect for a smartphone, not just a bendable one, but any kind of smartphone. Here's my question to you. If you could get an unbreakable phone screen, but you had less scratch resistance, would you go for it? I mean, this is still plastic we're talking about, and I highly doubt that it would withstand the torture that Jerry Rig Everything, for example, puts on his screen. Even in my case, my phone has micro scratches all over from being in my pocket with my money and my keys. So let me know down below, would you do it? Moving on, I'm just going to go ahead and touch on the hottest topic right now vis-a-vis -vis Intel because you guys might want to hear my opinion. Some leaks popped up showing that the new 8-core i7 processor would lack hyper-threading capabilities and that it would be transferred to the new i9 8-core models. Honestly, I don't mind. I understand that their naming scheme used to mean something very specific. The i3s had low core count and hyper threading, the i5s didn't have hyper threading but a higher core count, and the i7 had hyper threading and a high core count. But does it really matter? To me, as long as the performance increases, I don't care. If the 8 core 8 thread can outperform the 6 core 12 thread, then it's a better CPU and it deserves to be above it. Also, apparently, the new 8 core SKUs will have a solid altered IHS, so I want to see that. Honestly, the only thing I'm worried about is for Intel's image, its marketing, because while it's just a naming scheme, some people kind of abide by these rules. Now let's move on to in case you didn't know. Samsung keeps going with the attack ads on their YouTube channel and their latest one is savage. It's called Notch and you can see the Apple Store employee trying to convince the customer that the Notch doesn't cover that much screen real estate. The conversation is stopped by, well, let me just show you a clip real quick. What's going on over there? Oh no. Props to you Samsung, that was a great one. Then we have Google with a big update on their Play Store developer policies where all of the crypto mining apps are banned. Don't worry, if you have a crypto wallet or if you're managing your mining through your phone, that won't be a problem. But no mining apps allowed on the Play Store. In gaming, Dota 2 players can now see what's going to be in their next loot box. But there's a catch, you have to live in the Netherlands. Valve did this to comply with their gambling law, which considered loot boxes to be, well, gambling. This change is probably in response with what happened with the CSGO market a few weeks ago, where players couldn't even open their loot cases at all. This change also means that you cannot buy multiple boxes at a time, and that you can't gift them, trade them, or sell them. Then we have No Man's Sky, which has slashed its prices in half in response to all of the positive reviews of its next update. So if you wanted to play the game, now is a good time to buy it. This offer ends on the 30th of July, so if you were unsure, go get it. It's a good incentive to go uh, and play some multiplayer space fun. And now I'm going to do something that was requested by a lot of you guys, and I'm going to share the boot sequence intro song. If you guys want to listen to it, check it out. Link is in the description below. And that does it for the news today, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and click right here to see the latest video. It'd be greatly appreciated right here. This is the area for you to be able to click to see it's free content, right? And right here to subscribe, the button was already there. I just, I'm just pointing it out. So like right here, this circle, this black circle, that's what you click, all right? Take care. Stay frosty.